Hello, my friends. It's Ranger Russ at the Megs Point Nature Center. I'm in the old building today because we're doing another craft program. So why don't we get started? Now, I have done a few programs in the past about, or at least we've mentioned, invasive species. And today's craft, we're actually going to use invasive species. So I went out and collected some pieces of invasive species that we have growing here in the park. Normally, I would say you should not go and cut pieces of a plant for this craft project or anything, any craft projects. Um, but invasive species are harmful to the environment. Remember, there are two requirements to be invasive. The first is that it's not native or not found in this area. And the second is that it is harmful to the area where it's now found. So I have three invasives here. We have autumn olive which is starting to bloom. You can see the little flowers there. Extremely fragrant. So right now this whole room smells like autumn olive. And this came from uh, Asia, uh, mostly Russian, the Russian area. Okay, and then we've got a honeysuckle. We do get honeysuckle native to Connecticut. This is an invasive honeysuckle. Um, this is, again, this is from Asia. And the way you tell, one of the ways you can tell invasives from non-invasives is if it has a hollow stem. I don't know if you can see that. It's going to focus on me, not on the stem. But right there, there's a little hollow in the, in the stem. All of the invasives have that hollow stem. Some of the natives or some of the invasives and the natives have a solid stem. So this is the honeysuckle, another invasive. And then over here, we've got... Bittersweet. This is a vine again from Asia, and um, the roots of this are bright, bright orange. If you ever pull up uh, bittersweet, it's got bright orange roots. Now, I've mentioned, you know, we have three invasives here, and they're all from Asia. So everybody might think, oh, all of the bad things come from Asia. It goes the reverse as well. So there are plants and animals in Asia that are invasive there that they look at and say, everything's from North America that's bad in Asia. So it doesn't just go one way, it goes both ways. So this is gonna be a little craft project that we're gonna use those. And then I also got just a little bag. So we're gonna use that and we're just gonna cut it because all I need, so this is a way that you can recycle So I am recycling this bag. So first you collect some invasive parts of plants and then you find something to attach them to. I like this bag because of the color. It's nice and pink or magenta. So you could use the inside. That's a nice color too. And but I'm going to use the outside. I'm going to take the little handle off here. I don't really need this much space, but I've got a big bag, so I'm going to use it. So let's just remove the handle. Okay, now I am reusing a paper bag and this is going to be my base. So I'm going to turn the camera so you can watch what I'm doing. So the only thing you need once you've collected your invasive species is a glue stick. A glue stick and some invasive plants and you can create your own art project. We're going to start out, I'm going to use some of the olive. We're just going to take the leaves. Someone asked if a hollow stem could be used as a straw. It's not that big and hollow, so probably not make a good straw. I should angle this up a little so I can read your questions. How do invasive species get across the ocean? 
Are people purposely bringing them? Is poison ivy an invasive species? Because it invades our yard everywhere. Okay, so lots of questions there, and I love to answer questions. And I'm going to say, first of all, that yes, most of the invasives were brought here by people. Uh, most of these were brought here intentionally as an ornamental because they look nice. So people like the way they look. They brought them over and planted them around their homes, and they spread out and, become inv and become, became invasive. Um, and poison ivy is not an invasive. It's a native plant, and it's actually very beneficial to birds. Uh, they eat the seeds. So as much as we don't like poison ivy, it's actually uh, really beneficial to some of the bird species that we have here in Connecticut. So as you see, all I'm doing is taking the leaves. You can use any part of the plant that you want. Um, and I'm noticing some of the leaves have a little dirt on them and they don't stick to the paper very well. So if you clean them off a little bit, they'll stick better. I do have an idea of what I'm making. I'll let you try and guess what it is. That leaf doesn't want to stay down. Okay. I saw another question. I oh, know, I think I got them all. And if you continue to post where you're messaging from, that's always great to see the reactions from you. Hopefully you all got to see, I did a special uh, program this afternoon. We found a raccoon in a dumpster. Um, and I went out and got the raccoon out of the dumpster and explained uh, why I was doing it. So if you want to look for that, it is not yet up on our uh, website, but it will be, and you can learn about uh, what we need to do to control or to uh, limit the amount of interaction we have with wild animals. East Haven is coming in. So... I don't know that I'll have enough time to do my entire idea here, but I will do as much as I can. I think you can get the idea here, though, that there's two circles. Terryville. I wonder if anybody out there is seeing any of the thunderstorms yet. We had a little sprinkle and it got darker, but um, no storms here yet. Now, we should talk about when you're doing a program with invasive species and you use the seeds, you do not want to throw them back into the environment. Okay, we need them to, um, we need to keep them out of the environment. We don't want to be spreading them. So if we're picking, many people pick this one. This is the uh, bittersweet in the fall because it's got a beautiful bright, um, bright flower. And then the uh, it starts to spread all over the place, which is not a good thing. Now, something I should mention: the flower, the leaves that I'm using, and one of the th one of the cool things about these plants, if you look at that's the front of the leaf, the top of the leaf, it's very very green. The bottom of the leaf is a silvery color. This is the bottom, so it's a much lighter color, and it's darker on the top. So this is a good thing to remember if you are making something out of this, which I am doing, um, you can the same leaf can give you two different colors. So and 
I need a lot more leaves. Now, one of the things uh, that I talked about when we were doing the killdeer program is a mottled or, or broken up color is pretty common in nature. So when I'm doing this, if you notice, I'm using the leaves alternating top, bottom. I'm flipping them around and trying to do it in a, in a random way and not really plan it out. And that is to mimic, I don't know if you guys can see that, it mimics occurrences in nature. And what I am actually trying to mimic here, I will give you a clue if you haven't figured out what I'm making yet, which it's not a lot of it there to figure out yet. These are feathers, or I'm trying to make them look like feathers. All right. So what you're going to do is you're just going to glue your different pieces down. And when you have the shape that you want. I also have here, I grabbed a few little, a couple of clovers just to use. These are growing right out in the lawn. You know what? I'm going to use a different one because that's too close to the same color. I have buttercups. And you put the buttercup right there in the middle. This is to look like eyes. I don't know if anybody can figure out what this is supposed to be. Ah, owl. Yes, this is going to be an owl. The big eyes of the owl. So I made one earlier. Um, I got this. This was an ornamental uh, tree growing up. And notice really red on that side and green on this side. I think that's really cool. This is uh, it's an ornamental maple, a sycamore maple. Um, and I, I just, I love that color, that reddish color there. Copper beech also gets a nice red color. Um, but if you look here, I used, these are our autumn olive. Uh, this was gonna be a moon, I didn't quite finish this one. This is a, looks like a swallow or a bat. And then these are the little bugs flying around and the bat is chasing the bugs. So use your imagination. You can use all the parts of the plant. These are the seeds from the sycamore maple. You can also use um, the little bits of the flower. Um, these are the flowers from the autumn olive. You could glue those on there as well. But use your imaginations. I encourage you to uh, take pictures and send us the pictures. I want to see what you guys created. I will finish this one and we'll post it so you get to see what it looks like. Um, it, it is a little time consuming, but it's a lot of fun. And if you use larger leaves, like when we get to the, the wings, I was going to use some bigger leaves, maybe not that big. But again, you get a different color. So this is a good example of how you get different colors from different leaves and you can use the leaves to create the color that you want. If I wanted the whole thing to be the silvery color, I could do that. Usually the belly of a, a bird is much lighter. So I was gonna use a lot of the bottom of the leaves for the belly and then the outside would be darker um, and around the the outside of the cap would be darker as well. What is the nature of an invasive to take over the land? Are they invasive in their native land also? Great questions. So the first one I'll answer is the last one. 
these thing, these plants and animals are not native in the environment that they're naturally from. So you ask, well, why are they invasive here and not there? Which I think is an abbreviation of the next part of the question. And in their native areas, there are other plants and animals that compete or control the invasive. So if in uh, Russia, where the autumn olive is from, there are plants that bloom at the same time, that grow at the same rate. There are animals that eat them. There are things that help keep it in check. It works the same way with animals. Some of the invasive animals in this area that are found uh, in other parts of the world, it's because there are animals that eat them um, or that can compete with them for food. So when they're brought into a new environment, an environment that doesn't have any defenses against it, a good example of that um, are ground nesting birds. There are some places in the world that never had domestic cats or any sort of ground predator. And when we, uh, when Europeans first started arriving on their shores, on the ships, they brought rats and they brought cats. And those ground predators began preying on ground nesting birds, birds that never needed to nest up in trees because they didn't have any predators. So they would build their nest on the ground and their populations were decimated. They were almost completely, some of them were uh, forced into extinction because of these ground predators. So that's why we have to watch out for invasive species. If a, if a new species comes in and it doesn't take over the environment, uh, then we just call it a non-native or an exotic species. So that's possible as well. It doesn't have to, you know, a new animal coming into environment doesn't have to take it over. And some plants and animals that are brought here and we try and grow them, they're not able to. Either the climate isn't right or there are too many predators eating them. So these are all things that you, you should take into consideration. When you're buying plants for your gardens, it's a really good idea to try and get some native plants. Try and get plants that our native animals can eat. Um, the native birds love it if you planted blueberries all around your house because they like the blueberries. Um, hackberry, it's a great tree, produces a nice berry. The uh, birds love it. So keep those things in mind when you're, when you're doing your gardening Many of the uh, invasive insects that we have now, like the Asian longhorn beetle and the emerald ash borer, uh, those were not brought over here intentionally. It was a complete accident, but they are doing a lot of damage. It's, uh, it's pretty harsh on the environment. We're losing all of our ash trees. Uh, years ago, we started getting uh, woolly adalgia which I talked about when I did the uh, Devil's Hopyard program. So if you want to see the, our past programs, you can go to MegsPointNatureCenter.org or you can go to YouTube. There are some new videos that are just on YouTube uh, and not on Facebook, uh, but they are also on the, on the website. All right, so I was going to use a piece of the stem for the beak. Let's see how easy this stem is to break. All right. Cool book that has similar ideas. Look what I did with a leaf. All right, I've never seen that book. I'm going to have to look that one up. That sounds like a very cool book. All right, now remember, owl's beaks are curved, so I'm going to try and curve this little piece of stick I got. See, 
This is not turning out quite the way I liked it. Maybe we'll try a different stick. All right, I'm going to keep going with the wings since the uh, beak is not coming out very well right here. So I think you're getting the idea. I hope it looks like an owl to everyone. And I would really love to see your pictures and images, artwork that you do. We are looking at creating a Nature Center art show. So if you continue to put things up, we will be able to uh, add them to our website and hopefully put everything together into a um, an art show. So I would love to show the artwork that other people have done. If you are a professional artist and don't mind sharing your artwork, and it doesn't have to be something like this, it could be a painting, a sculpture, um, it could be photographs. I would love to see everybody's artwork and we can put it up and share it. Especially things from nature and I personally like things from ham and asset. So. All right, so I'm going to do a, a round head and then we'll start putting the wings in. Actually, we can see if I can find some good leaves to make up our wings. I want those wings to be darker. So again, if you want it darker, you use the top of the leaf. If you want it lighter, you use the bottom of the leaf. And I keep making the mistake. One of the things you should do whenever you're doing leaves, or feathers, I should say, start from the bottom and go up because the feathers layer on top, okay? If you start from the top and work down, it's not gonna look as much, that layering isn't gonna be as nice. So I'm planning on using uh, twigs for the beak and the feet. All right, do we have any questions? Hello, Tammy's watching. Tammy is my cousin. So hello, Tammy. Did I see Caitlin? Caitlin used to work here. And it looks like my wife is watching and I want to say happy anniversary to Janet. Is she there? Everybody do like a little smiley face for my wife. All right, this is turning out to be a gigantic owl, much bigger <laughs> and more time consuming. The swallow was a lot better, wasn't it? Or actually I keep calling it a swallow, it's supposed to be a bat. West Hartford, cool. All right, so we will be doing these programs on and on. I hope that everyone is enjoying them and can continue to tune in. I know that schools officially are going to be ending soon. Some people are ending this week, some people next week. So you can continue to tune in and watch um, the programs because I will continue to do them until we open the building. And even when the building's open, we'll probably, you know, we will still definitely be doing some programs online. We've had a lot of good responses, and I don't want to just end this program completely. So we will continue to see you. Remember to check in our virtual learning center for more information. 
and to visit a uh, great backyard pursuit. Instead of doing the great park pursuit this year, the DEP has chosen to do the great backyard pursuit, which is a great idea. Um, actually, the first one that they did was, uh, I think it was the first one, was finding art in nature. So I'm making art out of nature, and I should do a program where we go around and just take pictures here at Hammonasset. Um, I always tell people that every view at Hammonasset is a photo opportunity. And I think if we do a program like that, I'll be able to prove it. Because it's just absolutely a beautiful place to visit. Even though it looks like we're about to get a thunderstorm. All right, I want to thank everyone. I will finish this up and put a picture up so that you can all see uh, my completed owl. And please tune in tomorrow at 11 o'clock. I'm going to be doing another animal program. Um, and then again on Friday, 11 and 2. Either tomorrow or Friday, I'll be going out to another state park. Please send me a message of the park that you would like me to visit or an animal that you want to learn more about. Remember, the Megs Point Nature Center is all about the things that you can find in Connecticut. So if you want to learn about an elephant, I'm not really the person to ask. I could tell you a lot about an elephant, but I'm going to focus on things that you can find here in Connecticut. The animals that we have here are almost as exciting as elephants anyway, and some of them are even more exciting than an elephant. So continue tuning in. I hope that you're all enjoying the programs, and I will see you tomorrow at 11 o'clock.